What's up guys? Today we are in Istanbul, Turkey and we are going on another food tour in another country. Today we're going to be taking a tour of the culinary secrets of the old city. We're going to be switching it up. We're not going to be doing a self-guided tour today. So we need to go meet our tour guide. We'll introduce you guys when we get there. Today we are in Istanbul trying Turkish foods. And drinks. I didn't introduce myself properly. Uh, there are two ways of doing my name actually. The Turkish way is Ur. Ooh, it's spelled with a G in there, but the G is silent. Okay. Cool. But to make life easier for you guys, Adam works as well. Either Adam <laughs> or Ur. Either one they can stick to. Ur is good. Ur is good. So, what we have here is a very typical Turkish breakfast. As I mentioned earlier, like the feta cheese and the olives are always there on the table. Then we have this beef pastrami mm. with a spicy paste covering around the edges of it. Last one is the king of the breakfast table. That's a fresh clotted cream made from the water buffalo's milk, uh, which is much fattier than the cow's milk, so forms a richer layer of the cream. And we top it with honey, a chunk of it over the bread will be delicious. We're gonna enjoy it our breakfast and try a bunch of different things um, but we have so many stops today that we're going to try all these different types of Turkish foods already starting off with a good beginning drink coming down is used for the tea and coffee deliveries upstairs yeah, <laughs> yeah these guys don't want to be walking up and down the stairs place it there without spilling a single drop <laughs> now, don't start right away with the coffee. No, Let it settle for about a minute. All oh, nice and frothy. Or was just telling us that there's no layer of froth. Send it back or get out of there. It's not a good coffee shop. <laughs> right now we're letting it sit for a minute to let all the sediments drop down to the bottom. So when you're drinking a Turkish coffee, make sure you don't pound it all the way back or you'll get some uh, unpleasant surprise at the end. Or maybe you'll like that. I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it out. First Turkish coffee. Mm, nice and thick. So when they make a Turkish coffee, you have to actually order your preferred sweetness beforehand. Naturally, I got mine with no sugar because I love a strong black coffee. So once they boil it up, they bring it over, you let it sit for a minute, let all the sediments go to the bottom, and then you sip away. To me, it's like really thick. You can almost feel a texture in the coffee as you're drinking it, but it tastes delicious. Breakfast was delicious. Now back to the markets and on to our next stop. It'll clean it, it smells up. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a shot of it. Yeah, no, no, okay. I like, uh, my smell's been like half and half since I had COVID. Oh, clear it? Okay. So they just gave us something at the stand that's supposed to clear our sinuses. We're supposed to smell it, not drink it. It's like a menthol. It's a menthol. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that is strong. I, I can smell again. <laughs> I'm a whole new person. <laughs> Here, Sean, you have to try this. Is that clear? That's yeah. like a Vix on steroids. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're just taking a walk through the spice market right now that was nearby where we just had breakfast. Um, there's so many different shops, all these different spices, dried fruits. There's even a place for backgammon right back there. All, you name it, all sorts of trinkets, just like a typical market. And they're located all throughout the city. Ur was just telling us that like each market was really built to pay for areas. Like the Grand Bazaar was built so they could fund the Hagia Sophia. So each market had like a fundamental purpose back in the day. And nowadays it's, it's where locals and tourists come to shop and pick up their necessities. So, this place uh, will be having a soup, which is a very popular breakfast soup in one city in southeastern Turkey, where these guys are from. And by 11 a.m. in the morning, it's all gone from the restaurants in that city, uh, only for breakfast they serve it. Whereas over here, we drink it for uh, lunch and dinner as well, because it's going to be quite a hearty soup made with the neck part of the lamb. Time to mix in a nice hearty soup and some more bread. About to try our first bayran. It has the meat from the neck of the lamb, and it has garlic, chili. That is full of flavor. Oh yeah. You can definitely taste the chili. It hits the back of your throat a little bit. You can see the chili flakes floating in it. I'm about to start sweating. 
I like that. It's really rich. And it's got that nice, like Marissa said, that flavor. You can feel it right here in your throat. The one thing I love about the chili is that it definitely wakes you up, so I could see why this would be a breakfast soup. <laughs> It gives you a good kickstart for your day. <laughs> we'll have a small bite of a dessert that we call Cunefe. K-U-N-E-F-E. It's made with this long stringy dough, like an angel hair dough. All right. Rather than the sheets of the pie dough like we use in baklava. And in between the dough, there's a layer of cheese. But this uh, unsalted fresh cheese doesn't taste like much uh, like the cheese. And they cook it on the grill over there where they do the kebabs as well. Once it's cooked, you put the sugar syrup over it and top it with pistachios. Time to try some dessert. We got some kunafe, nice syrupy pastry with some cheese on the inside, topped with pistachios. It's almost like a mozzarella stick meets dessert. You see, like you have like that cheesy flavor, but then that sweet syrup. Oh my god, this is <laughs> delicious. I walked some of this food off. That was delicious, but I'm definitely starting to feel a little bit full after that big breakfast, the soup, and then the dessert. We'll be hungry again soon, don't worry. Mm. Oh hang on, was that my good son? <laughs> <laughs> We just popped up a random staircase on the side of the alley and now we're up here outside this mosque. I completely forgot my headscarf today, so luckily I'm able to borrow one before we head into this mosque. Um, women, you always have to make sure that your hair is covered, your knees are covered, and your shoulders, and then men's shoulders and knees as well. It's a good thing I'm wearing black because it matches my outfit no matter what. Feng Shui. Also, you have to take off your shoes before you enter the mosque. The interior is just so much more detailed. The Ustam Pasha was built all the way back in the 1550s, which actually makes it older than the Blue Mosque, and in my opinion, way more ornate and beautiful and way less people. I mean, right now there's only probably 20 people in here with us, and we hadn't even heard of it before. As we're walking through these alleys, taking a break from the food, I figured we'd mention that we took this tour with Culinary Backstreets. And the price for this tour is about 125 euros per person. And it lasts approximately five to six hours. So far, it's been great. And we'll give you, of course, an honest review at the end of the day. So the bean salad comes with the great northern white beans, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and some vinegar olive oil. And definitely need to add some salt on it as well though. We're at our next stop and we're going to be trying a Turkish meatball, but he said before we're just trying like a bean salad. It's got onions, tomatoes, vinegar, we squeezed a little bit of lemon on it and then also added a little bit of salt. So it's just going to be a really fresh, kind of sour salad. All the, the beans. Oh my goodness. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> It's a good thing you love me. <laughs> the perfect amount of vinegar. I like that he added the salt. I feel like that gave it a little extra something. And then the lemon makes it just a little bit more tart. But really, really fresh ingredients. Um, the tomatoes here are amazing. And this is perfect start before we eat the meat. Also, the green peppers can be super sweet or super hot. You never know until you take a bite into it. So it's a Russian roulette at your own risk. You can go for it. And this is beef or? This is mostly beef. Then they use some fat from the lamb, especially the tail fat, okay. which is used a lot in the Turkish cuisine mm -hmm. uh, to give that nice flavor and uh, moisture to it. First, I'm going to go for the meat. The kofta. Hofta. Hofta. Kofta. 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 Have you seen this Pink Panther uh, movie? With, uh, yeah. Hamburger. Hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. Mm. So much flavor. Oh. You can definitely taste like uh, it's got that little bit of like fat grease to it. Keeps it nice and moist, but tons of flavor. Perfect char on the outside. We've actually had quite a bit of this over the last few days, so it's one of my favorites. So with these chili peppers, you never know if it's gonna be sweet or if it's gonna be spicy. And Sean and I have two on our plate, so I'm gonna try one and he's gonna try one. Hopefully I get a sweet one. <laughs> I feel like the skinnier one's probably gonna be the spicier one. Eh, I'm gonna go for it. He said it's more spicy towards like here. Towards the top, because that's where the seeds are. So, so should I just like go and bite in the middle? <laughs> nah, yeah, good. take it from the tip, it will give you an idea. Okay, yeah. all right. Can you eat? Mm, I, yeah. At first I was like, no, it's a little sweet. 
now my tongue's starting to burn. Yeah. yeah it's starting. <laughs> Just a little bit. Okay. So this one was spicy. Definitely a sweet pepper. Marissa's over here making faces. She tried it right here. Or said if you eat it towards the top, it's 10 times stronger. Oh. <laughs> okay. You are adventurous. Dragon breath. Nice and hot. I'm trying to resist the urge to eat everything because it's so delicious, but then I'm gonna get really full and I won't be able to eat the next thing. So, I think I'm gonna stop there. Another delicious meal. Much on this area in the market for a safer scale is the first area that we'll be passing through is all uh, those kind of shops. It's gonna be a little bit rougher, but perfectly safe, yet the traffic still runs through it. It's, uh, through these narrow alleys, so be careful and stay on the sides of the road. Okay. Oh, we are heading off the beaten path. This is why we came on this tour, to <laughs> hit the back streets. Back road. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, this is a family run place. Right now it's the fifth generation running it. Some of the older generation's photos are up on the walls. Mm -hmm. I actually got to meet even this guy. Uh, he was already in his 90s when I first started working with these guys. And he was still coming to work though. Mm -hmm. And being so old, they do more of the traditional uh, sweets. So Turkish delight, yeah. definitely, is something you will find everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's like a jelly bean candy. With different nuts or the fruit flavors you will find. Mm -hmm. Red one is with yes. rose mm -hmm. and you can again see the rose petals in there mm -hmm. in little chunks uh, this one is with pistachio mm -hmm. yet this one is with something called mastic it comes from the resin of a, tr uh, of a tree mm -hmm. and it's a very piney woody kind of a taste and smell mm -hmm. so most americans say it tastes like pine salt you know this <laughs> <playing hedges. laughs> so i'm not saying that you're gonna love it you know it's gonna be a little uh, different taste but for the experience you can try it do the rose. Rose? Yeah, the yeah. That's good. Nice and sweet. Does it taste like roses? Just taste Never eaten roses before. Does it taste like the smell of roses? You never had rose here? Yeah, it does. It's good. It's like ar aromatic. I'm gonna go for the pistachio because I'm a like pistachio girl. Oh, yeah. This is the pistachio. Yes, the is that like um, powdered sugar on the outside? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's either coconut, powdered sugar, coating on top. Mm. Yeah. Mm. At first I didn't taste the um, pistachio because of the powdered sugar on the outside but then as you're like chewing you get more of the pistachio flavor and like the jelly like um, candy on the outside. It's really really good. I haven't had one of these yet so this is my first. Yeah, yeah. So this one is called a mastic and he said it's very piney. A lot of Americans say it tastes like pine salt so we'll see. Mm. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of like a mint in a way. I know like it's pine, but like it has a little bit of a mint, refreshing kind of flavor to it. It's good. I don't care what this tastes like. I'm never gonna try pine salt. <laughs> pine salt's not your top thing you want to eat in your life. I like that. Yeah, it's like refreshing, like a mint would be. Yeah, it feels like you're down at the stream fishing. Mm -hmm. Like candy, candy flavored. The pistachio one tasted more like candy to me. The rose was really good as well. They were all good. Yeah, a little present for you guys. It's a book of our company. Or just give us a little present. A guide to the city. I have to check this out. Unfortunately, we'll be leaving tomorrow, but when we come back, we're going to have a nice list of places to eat. At this stop, we are trying the donor kebab, and he was telling us that this donor kebab place is pretty different and really delicious because there's stacks of vegetables in between the layers of meat and just watching him like shave it off you can tell that this is made with passion they said every morning if you come here around like 7 or 8 a.m you can actually watch them sit here and layer it and build the whole thing before it cooks and now you just as it, as it cooks all those flavors of the vegetables ink mix with the meat and you shave it all together it looks delicious look how juicy that looks i'm gonna try the famous donor kebab now that is the best one that I've had in Turkey so far. Mm -hmm. The added peppers are so nice and the tomatoes and then the meat has a really nice char on it but it's really really juicy. This is kind of what I expected when it came to Turkey. This meat's so good I just smashed my fork trying to get another bite. <laughs> the chicken is just as delicious like these meats are so tender and juicy. A lot of places we've tried the kebabs have been more like a dried meat. 
but this is so much flavor and so juicy. I'm so glad he's brought us to these local spots. Those kebabs were the best I've ever had in my life. We will have to put that location below. If you come to Istanbul, you have to come get a kebab there. All right, so I was just placing the order for what we call pide. Just like the flat bread is called pide, it can come with different toppings, uh, just like a thin crust pizza. But rather than, rather than a round shape, we make it in a long boat shape. So we're trying two different types of pita. The one I have here is going to be a cured meat. He said the meat has a very strong and unique flavor. Hot. Mm. The meat's, the meat's definitely pretty strong. It's got like a very salty flavor to it. And mixed with the cheese, it kind of reminds me of the flavoring of a Georgian cheese, because a Georgian cheese is very like, salty and creamy. And so I think like the mixture is just kind of reminding me of that a little bit. The cheese is super creamy, and then the crust is perfectly crispy. Look at that. Just threw a little extra cheese on top. We've got a ground meat with tomatoes and parsley, and then a crack an egg on there. See the yolk? Let's try this pita. On this one, you can you can definitely like the meat has like a really rich flavor, and then you've got that egg on top, and you can taste all the vegetables and herbs inside it. Nice and crunchy and thin. I like this a lot. This is a perfect lunch, and it doesn't have a too much tomato in it, so hopefully it doesn't upset my stomach. I'm so full. We still have, I think, two more stops, and I feel like I'm gonna explode. So happy we didn't uh, eat breakfast before we started today, and I don't think we'll be doing dinner after, probably. Maybe a light snack later for dinner. We'll have our um, Turkish delight. Turkish delight. Yeah. <laughs> I love going on food tours because it gets you out of your comfort zone for trying foods, because a lot of these foods that I, I wouldn't have normally tried on my own. If you're one of our regular followers, you might think that we've switched to uh, just doing food tours, but I promise you we'll be back exploring. Life's just been crazy lately. We've been in three different continents in the last week and a half and something that we always like to showcase is the food. Uh, Marissa was in Morocco, we were in Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey, uh, we were on the Asian continent side of Turkey the other day and we've just been traveling around and we love food so but we'll be back exploring soon. All right so this is quite a nice old shop dating from 1870s uh, run by a family and there's one and only thing they make, uh, which is in these cups over here. It's a fermented millet drink. So water, millet and sugar mixed together. Usually we do it with some cinnamon on top. Is cinnamon okay with everyone? Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. Trying our first fermented millet drink. We also put a little bit of cinnamon on top because that's the normal way that they do it. And it's very thick. It reminds me of a yogurt, like this is sweet yogurt back home with the thickness and the sweetness of it. It does have like a slight lemon taste, even though he said there's no lemon in it. It's just a fermented millet. Yeah, I feel like I'm just drinking a sweet yogurt. You should try it. Cheers to some fermented millet. It is thick, like a smoothie or like a, almost like a creamy yogurt. Yeah, it definitely has like a, almost like an applesauce texture, like a smoother applesauce. It tastes like apple, lemon with the cinnamon. It really reminds me of like a cinnamon applesauce. Pretty darn good. So we just learned that this is actually called boza. And if you watch our Bulgarian food tour video, we tried another version of boza. Personally, I really like this one because it does remind me of like an applesauce and a yogurt flavor. I didn't realize that this was also a boza. Last stop on the food tour list. I'm sad, everything's been so good. I don't want it to end. Big shout out to Andre and Ida for letting us film them along our journey. They've been amazing, giving us facts and recommendations for when we go to Australia and New Zealand. And it's been a pleasure. It was awesome to have a couple extra people on this journey with us. As our tour comes to an end, we've only got one stop left, and I think it's safe to say that we both highly recommend the Culinary Secrets of the Old City Tour, brought to us by Culinary Backstreets, and hopefully you are lucky enough to have Uor as your guide, but if not, he said the other guides are just as amazing. Uh, I highly recommend it. I mean, we've been 
over five hours. We've eaten a ton of foods. Everything has been delicious. Definitely something we couldn't have done on our own. So we highly recommend you come do a tour with them. Next up, we're going for biryan, which is a traditional food of the Kurdish natives of the southeastern part of Turkey. This neighborhood we're in is like heavily populated by the Kurdish, and a lot of the restaurants specialize in biryan. So it's a pit roasted lamb, and that's what we'll be eating for lunch. It's more a traditional way with the copper bowl and the ladle that you can drink out of. And they also serve it unsalted, so you just add the salt to your taste. Aryan. Ar Aaron. 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 Like uh, that Key and Peele skit? Aaron. So why didn't you say it the first time I said A Aaron? Because it's pronounced Aaron? Son of a This is my second time trying Aaron, but this time it's in Turkey and he said that they serve it and make it fresh here in this restaurant. Um, it's really nice and frothy and I added my own salt to it. It doesn't come pre-salted, that way whatever taste you like with the salt, you can you can choose how much you want to put in there. Yeah, that's really good. It's a little bit thinner than the last one I tried, but I tried the the pre-bottled one. So it's probably because it's fresh and homemade that it's a little bit thinner. But the flavor is still really really good. Or I was telling you can drink it with out of the ladle or straight from the bowl. This one is the rice dish we'll be having, which is encased in this uh, dough on the outside. Like the phyllo, but a little bit thicker. And inside the rice is cooked with some chicken, some currants, pine nuts, and some almonds as well that you can see on top of it. Wow. It's like a rice pastry. Mm. And then uh, for the meat, uh, we got the ribs part, so feel free to just use your fingers to pick it up and the meat will easily come off the box. Okay. okay. Are you trying a whole mix? Yeah. Am I breaking the rules? <laughs> no rules. Rules are made to be broken, right? <laughs> you can taste that it's just been slow roasted. The biryani is super tender. We learned that it's cooked for like four or five hours and smoked over the embers. You can taste that rich smoky flavor. It's so tender it falls apart, it melts in your mouth. Not really like spicy, but it has a really like just savory flavor. Mm. Really like this dish. I think you saved some of the best for last. So this is just so like a this giant. It's like exactly one of the biggest uh, slices of tobacco. This specific style is called carrot slice. There's no carrots used in the making of it, just as shape wise. And this one actually has the most flavoring of the phyllo. So, you know, classic style, the square blocks uh, usually have about 40 to 60 layers. This one goes up to 80 layers of the phyllo stacked up on top of each other. Mm. I shouldn't have to explain how baklava tastes because hopefully you've had it before, and if you haven't, make sure that you try it at some point in your life. But this is the perfect way to end the food tour. Oh. We got a little bit of Turkish tea and a beautiful slice of baklava. Love it. It's so nice meeting you. Thank you so much for a great Pleasure. day. It was great meeting you guys. Yeah, we had a ton of amazing foods. We walked it off and it was six hours of delicious Turkish cuisines and amazing places. Culinary Back Streets was the best place. Make sure you book your tour with them. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Good luck to you guys on the road. Thank you, brother. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Very nice meeting you guys. I is selling the outfits for these young kids and now that it's the summer season the school is out there will be quite a few kids who are going around the city dressed oh. up in such fashion like a prince looking outfit if you come across any of them feel sorry for the kid because <laughs> for one day they get to dress like this and they are taken to all the fun places in town they get everything they want it's a day of fun and laughter so the next day is not so much fun they go through the operation of circumcision oh, <laughs> I see. which is a requirement for the muslim boys to go through but in Turkish culture, it's not a Muslim thing, but in Turkish culture, we wait until the kid is older. There's no set age, but usually between six to nine of kind of an age, because you want the kid to have a memory of it. 
You won't have a memory. Yeah, exactly. It's seen as a step in the middle. I didn't know anything about it. You wanted to value their wiener, huh? <laughs> You'd be proud of that thing. Exactly. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I don't remember that. But afterwards, mine. there's a big peace <laughs> given. There's a big celebration. <laughs> I drink <laughs> dancing music while the kid is laying on the bed in one corner of the bottle. Oh, man. <laughs> If regular tattooing doesn't work out for Marissa, we'll just buy some of that and start making henna tattoos. <laughs>